I've got to draw some parallels between Gamergate and uh, the way people react are reacting to the NFL. You know, the way that people react to Anita Sarkeesian and the way that people are reacting to their favorite uh, sports uh, institution protesting. I mean, is their protest hurting the sport itself? Does it, does it, does it change any of the sport itself? I don't know. I just think of it kind of like people who will boycott a company that makes games because they made a game that that went with feminists' whim. But you know, other things I'm thinking about are how people are saying that people are acting like snowflakes because they're concerned about uh, the ACA or Obamacare being repealed and replaced with something awful. Oh, you're just being a snowflake. You need to, to, to. Trump knows what he's doing, uh, you know. So it's it's really a snowflakey to to worry whether you're going to have health care or whether your friends or family is going to have health care. But it's totally patriotic and and totally awesome to boycott an American institution because some people that are involved in it are protesting the way that black people are treated by police. No, it's about the flag, America. Look past the fucking symbols and look what they're trying to say. And look how ridiculous some of you are acting about it. I said it's it's acting like uh, uh, some of the people would, oh, they're criticizing my game some in a way that I don't care about. And they might change games in the future to be more like what they're wanting. Well, then buy a different game, you know? It just the, the things that people get triggered by. And then those same people will claim that postmodernist uh, far left is, is getting triggered by everything. Well, you're getting triggered by just as much stuff. That's what I, I think is just so so funny about this, is just how easily people get triggered by stuff. You know, maybe we really do need to have this, this overload of things that are edgy. I mean, it's starting to happen. People have just sort of run out. They, oh, I've seen that before. Oh, I've seen that kind of thing before. Oh, I've, you know, and we're, we're, we're experiencing more of that as time goes on. And maybe we'll finally have an overload of that and we won't be getting offended at so many things and we might actually be... Maybe we're going to have to become a society that can actually still pay attention. Whereas now, you know, you want it in sound bites and uh, uh, action, everything looks like an action scene, right? Sound bites and action scenes. Because edginess is, is, isn't edgy. And what happens when... The, the very the very thing that, that has allowed media to control people is to always ride this fence of what is edgy. That draws people into whatever it is. We've reached a point where nothing is too edgy. So the power that media has always had, as long as media has been around, that power now sees a very huge threat. And that is that the edginess that's always drawn us in doesn't mean shit anymore. Sometimes edginess can be not necessarily what the emotional content attached to something. You know, that's why I'm mentioning in commercials and, and movies and other such things. It's the, some of it's the visuals. Some of it is uh, the way they'll try to tantalize your senses. Well... Once it gets tantalized just a little too much for things that don't amount to a hill of beans, you just sort of zone all that stuff out and it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Then that's the level we've reached. There's going to be a point where we are going to want to have something more raw, more, uh, you know, not as processed, whatever it is, our information, it, everything is not going to be as processed. Our food probably won't be as processed. You know, everything is, is leading towards things that aren't quite as processed. But I just, I'm, it, we're, 
getting so close to that that time, and I don't know, I, I can't very accurately gauge when that point is going to occur. You know, I'm feeling like it could happen as soon as a year, but maybe things are just going to have to get a lot worse before they get better. You know, maybe it won't be until 2019. I hope it's sooner than that, though. <laughs> but there are there are so many things coming together to where when we lose that when we can we just zone out anything that's edgy anymore that's when we're going to, to really start to see a change that's when we're, we'll start to see a, a different different set of demands from everyone for the way we get like i said just about everything the way that we get information the way we pass on stories the amount of tantalizing we want our senses to have when trying to ingest something you know we may we might have a point coming up where 20 years from now we'll look at it and go wow how did we ever get that boring oh yeah the period right before it it's going to change the way that we we do everything i mean things were changed completely in the early 90s when we were stepping away there were there were types there were patterns thought patterns that we stepped away from we shifted gears in just so many ways that's why when you look at old commercials you can see the things that would either tantalize our senses or make us what what it was that was necessary to make us think about a product okay because i mean they'll try just about anything and then when it when it doesn't work it's so good they don't get it very many sales on whatever it is then they try a different tactic you know sometimes a commercial might make pe people like jump a product you know you have to look at the way that that people wanted to e tantalize either our senses or they wanted to tantalize our minds in order to want to buy a product right that when you look at that old footage it speaks volumes of the way that society was at the time the way that the, the, the a common a commonality in thinking you know the 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 mindset that people were in at those times and it's it's always interesting how it reflects the, this mindset would reflect in the way that we do everything that's why the early 90s was what it was. We were getting out of this whole bigger than life. Uh, 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 the, the things that showed it the most were hair bands, you know. Everything flashy, you have to, it has to be, go for the sky, go for the... No, it was just like, in the 90s, it was, no, let's, let's try to look at what we really can do and what do we really represent. And... Let's be honest and raw. There, there were bits of that in the early 90s. It started to change in the later 90s, and I don't know how to describe how it changed in the later 90s, but I can describe the early 90s. It was this step away from the way the 80s was over the top on everything. And this went into our, our psyche. It went in, It's a general mindset that you found just about anywhere. And uh, I, I think we're due for one of those changes. Like I said, there's, there is going to be a point where this oversaturation with all this edgy stuff and trying to tantalize our senses constantly, it's going to start to, to seriously backfire. It's, it's a huge reality check that we're about to go through. Unfortunately, what could go come with this, we could go through a major depression. I'm, I'm talking major, major depression really 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 hard times i think this it could be paired with something like that but who knows who knows i just know that we are we're in for a change in our mindset our psyche usually this sort of thing changes about every 10 years maybe 10 maybe 12 years and right now it has been about 19 years and we haven't moved on to this next mode yet and that's odd it's odd for it to be stretched out for this long but i think it's about to move but we we are in for an awakening it's hard for me to really think about deeply how many ramifications that's going to have it's a little bit painful to think about 
Because there's just so many possibilities of places that it could go. You know, it's just, oh, oh, you think, oh. You know, I just know we have something coming up and, you know, we just got to let it play out how it how it'll go. I, I'm hoping that we don't end up in a a world war. You know, and to those who are upset with my one of my last videos where I said that Trump basically declared war on North Korea, to North Korea and probably to the UN and to a number of other people, um, they think that when when Trump said what he said that it was a declaration of war. You know, we're telling them you can't test any more weapons or we're going to obliterate you. But a war with them doesn't mean that it's going to be full war games thermonuclear war. It's it's it may not it may not even come to that. Um, it, 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 there's so many factors that that go into this. Like if China was to uh, intervene, we we started an attack and then China starts to intervene. Well, at that point, we'd be at war with China. That would suck. Something does eventually need to be done about North Korea. I mean, there's 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 no doubt about it. Something needs to be done at some point. But I don't think uh, threatening them the way that. Trump threatened them, I don't think that was a smart idea. But who knows, you know? So, you know, if we if we make it through the next few years, um, I mean, something that I fantasize about, and, and it just, it's, it's, I fantasize about movies no longer being something that, you know, multi-billion dollars are spent on each one, or, you know, several hundred million dollars spent on each one. It's like, uh, no, this is stupid. I also and and a fantasy where an awards show is just a cheap stage, a few decorations here and there, just a regular little old sound system, and it's twenty minutes max. It's not some big, uh, giant polished turd. God, even even the presidential inauguration. What a giant polished turd! What a turd! What a waste of money! total waste of money but we somehow expect it right now in the mindset we're in we just expect it to get more extravagant and everything more and more extravagant oh my goodness so extravagant now i guess i guess we've sort of built upon what was set in place around 1998 you know we started that extravagant thing you know it was it was in firmly in place by that time I'll put it that way by 98 and we've just kept going with that stronger and stronger and stronger I mean seriously what 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 would shock you now what 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 could be said that would shock you or are you just like well no nothing there's really nothing shocking anymore when our whole society starts becoming that way um there's going to be a change. There, there's no denying this element. So much is going to have to be figured, refigured out. And it is rather interesting that this comes along with the Trump presidency. Because it's that same type of thing. Wow, a whole wrench has been put into things. We have to really figure this out. It's just weird how, it, how everything comes together like that. You know, it makes people have to think about what is the meaning of our government? What is it that we want the government to do? What do we want it to handle, and what do we not want it to handle? Yeah, this this change is going to be big, and it may not be something that's pleasant. I mean, it could end up being a, a, some sort of a... It could be religious, for all we know. It could be going a huge step backwards. Huge step backwards, for all we know. You know, I don't know how it's going to, to happen and be implemented, but I do know that there is going to be a change. A change that will define a decade, at least a decade. A change that might be as strong as how everything changed after 9-11. I was, I was having a conversation recently with someone about how there are, in a couple years, there will be people who are over 18, you know, 18 and older, you know, starting in a couple years, that will not know in any way, shape, or form what things were like before 9-11. It was... It, it, things... It, God, the amount of things that were different before then. The amount of worries we didn't live with. And then that incident just kind of changed everything. Changed so much about our society. It 
triggered this rut we've been in. Because maybe, maybe you know, starting around '98, you know, if if we wouldn't have had 9/11 happen, we may have drifted into another another mode for only that period of time. Then we would have just went ne- to the next mode after that in the same amount of time, ten every ten or twelve years, or somewhere between eight and twelve years, you know, flowing into another change. But 9/11 just it's like it's, it's any of that change just completely stopped and it all became about refining and now we're at this point where we're people are screaming make america great again well we're certainly going to have a change anyway so